Hello everyone, this is May 24th and 25th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Overnight on May 23rd going into the 24th, we saw as the fissure activity that was centered around the Poiki Road fissure complex moved further up rift back into Leilani Estates as fissures in Lower Leilani reopened and started flooding the streets with fresh hot magma that started flowing both to the north and south taking out dozens of homes throughout the night. In the morning overflight from McCalber, we see this fresh magma in the lighter gray as contrasted to the darker previous flows, which is pancaking out in the subdivision and slowly taking homes as it goes both to the north and to the south. And this is taking out homes on Kalpili Street and on Mohala, it's really a tough day for many people. Now while this is going on, the activity further down the rift at the Poiki Road Fisher Complex as well as at Fisher 22 right on the edge of the Puno Geothermal Venture is still very high. It hasn't diminished yet. And this activity has produced another lava flow that has made its way into the ocean. The encroachment upon the Puno Geothermal Plant has essentially ceased by this point. And we are still, though, in the midst of a large-scale eruption in the Lower East Rift Zone. The reactivation of Fisher 7 and Fisher 21 overnight is creating additional perch ponds. Now, these perch ponds are formed as the eruption occurs in a relatively flat area and is able to spread out radially. And when it does so, the hotter, fresher eruption is able to overlap the lava as it begins to cool and creating slightly higher and higher banks, which will constrain the lava and form a levee, which essentially creates these raised bodies of lava, also known as perch ponds. Now, one of the issues that the last few days has highlighted is the difficulties that the county is having in determining if a home is lost or not. The rapid pace that the eruption has taken in phase two has meant dozens of homes a day are being lost. And this is actually going undocumented by the authorities in many ways. They are vastly undercounting the amount of homes lost. And this matters to people who are trying to file for insurance to get a little relief help and as well as move forward and just have a little bit of closure. This is the first time I'm going to mention Hawaii Tracker. So up until this point, Ryan Finley has been working on Hawaii Tracker every day, putting out multiple updates and trying to get the real-time information to the people that need it. But one of the side projects we take up is to document the homes lost. We're going to provide a real-time way to, for people to see if their home has been determined to be lost or not. And we do this with many guys on the ground, including Andrew Hara, Chris, Heath, and Ken, who we'll mention a little later. And we're also doing a ton of image analysis. Basically, every photo, every video that's coming out of the eruption, we are trying to figure out what homes are being lost specifically and mark those on a map, which we're about ready to release to the public. Back up at the Kilauea summit, the periodic eruptions of ash are continuing. And these eruptions of ash are primarily being blown downwind into the Ka'u Desert, which is an uninhabited part of the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. But further on from that, you have inhabited areas such as Ocean View, Nalehu, Pahala. And these areas are getting light dustings of ash, which have been occurring for a couple weeks now. In the thermal map from USGS on May 24th, we see the new lava flow that has made ocean entry on the west side of the previous flows coming from the Fisher Complex near Poiki Road and Leilani Avenue. While Fisher 8 did briefly reactivate on May 24th, the activity at it was definitely not the main attraction. There are many more active fissures further down the rift at this point. The fissures in Leilani Estates are making a lava flow that's now primarily moving to the north throughout the night. 
as the sun rises on May 25th, Lower Leilani Estates, particularly the area around Fisher 7 and Fisher 21, has been totally transfigured. Many of the homes that were close to the eruptive site and the lava flows the previous day have been now totally inundated. This means dozens more homes are lost throughout the night and more people are wondering if they're ever going to see their property again. Uh, I'm not sure the address here. Picking basically the house behind my neighbor. That was Chris Brumeister. On May 25th, he was going around Lower Leilani Estates documenting the homes that were lost that morning. And the thing about this is it's encroaching upon his own home. This is the type of thing that we get in the eruption is many people helping and, you know, lending a hand, particularly at Puhuanuapuna, even though they themselves are directly impacted by the eruption. They are the ones being put out, but they're also the ones that are some of the most giving. We see this lava flow that is working its way to the north on Kalpili Street coming from Fisher 21. And this, like many of the other lava flows that we've seen throughout this eruption, is not moving that fast at the flow front. It's not going to outrun you. It's not even going to outwalk you. It's a slow, persistent, destructive force, but it's not a deadly one. Many hazards do exist from the eruption, but the lava itself isn't ranking that high up on that list. By late afternoon on the 25th, the eruption from Fisher 21 and the lava flow produced from it has cut off Kahukai Street, isolating the few homes that are left on the Kahukai Hill and removing access for one of the more popular points that people were going to to film the eruption from. Now this footage is from Scott Wilson, who is a pilot that is flying around in a small Cessna that is taking up photographers and researchers to see the eruption from uh, 3,000 feet. But the thing about it is, is he's going up multiple times a day. And what he's providing the community is essential information. And it's pretty simple what he's doing too. He's just simply taking his cell phone, hanging it to the window of the plane, and just recording and taking photos as he does his flyover. Scott is turning these photos around very quickly multiple times a day and some of the best information came from these overflights. In the thermal map produced by USGS on May 25th, we see the lava flow that we've been discussing that is moving to the north in Lower Leilani that is going to soon cross Poiki Road. This lava flow looks like it's going to encroach upon the Puno Geothermal Venture yet again, but this time from a different angle. We also see the Fisher 22 and the Fisher Complex near Poiki Road and Leilani Avenue continue to supply this lava flow that's making ocean entry, and these fissures have even increased in volume, if anything. There is just a tremendous amount of lava coming down the system at this point. That'll do it for May 24th and May 25th from the 2018 eruption. This part of the eruption is very compacted. There's a whole lot going on in a very short amount of time. So there's stuff I probably missed, but I'm gonna try and get back to it as the series progresses and we get a little bit more into the steady state of Fisher 8 when there isn't a whole lot of changes on Fisher 8. Hopefully we can go back and revisit some of the things that I wanna talk about in this part of the eruption, but there's so much to talk about in so little time that I feel like we're just going to have to space it out a little bit. So thank you for joining me. Until the next one, aloha.